Hi, this is Joe Chavez. I'm very excited to lead a session on InterSource in Government, our 18-month journey. All right, let's dive right in. First, I'm going to set a context of what government means in relation to this session. First, we have CMS, DHCS, California Department of Healthcare Services, the beneficiaries, those who receive the healthcare services, and those who deliver the healthcare services, so providers. Um, so how does a government entity like DHCS facilitate the delivery of healthcare services to 13 million people when given $100 billion through people, process, services, and technology? So DHCS lists nearly 400 services and categories in its portfolio. So I can, you can imagine the number of people, processes, and technology it takes to operate that system. So DHCS is a large department. Um, in, in my area, we're about 150 people and our division is known as the Medi-Cal Enterprise uh, System for Modernization or MESMD. So I took a look at the DHCS uh, strategic plan published in 2014 and it mentions the word technology four times. This is great because DHCS will be focused on healthcare delivery and facilitating that, not technology. However, technology in, use, in the context is used is several loaded terms which imply complex systems that um, are enterprise class and should be available, uh, generally available and, and have a long lifetime. So for me, my engagement started in August, 2018. Um, and I set about a quick discovery mission on several modernization projects without any expectations or assumptions. Along the way, I quickly stumbled uh, across a plethora of terms and acronyms, which you can see in the word cloud. And the one that always came up is technology. And frequently the question was, what is this technical solution for this? And I was always reply, if this was not already understood, what is the business need to drive or the value um, that we are implementing the technology for? So how does one move forward in a situation like this? Um, I'll focus on the answer to this question in the remainder of the session. So I started by building a mind map, which has been refined for this presentation uh, around a foundation or the key pillars of what needs to take place in DHCS. First, it starts with the business. I found the business engaged with stakeholders, MEs, and frontline staff. This is very, very, very good. Architecture in terms of technology and standards in terms of technology were, were available, but very light um, and not enough to base uh, a software a software project on or build software from. So established standards around architecture from multiple perspectives and interoperability data management, technology stack, tooling, et cetera. Engineering, um, DHCS traditionally outsourced uh, projects in the group that I was in or the division. And um, so went about establishing engineering patterns and practices within the context of the architecture approach and the standards and made sure that engineering was included with business and design as part of the, the development workflow. DHCS had plenty of data and code available. So the moving forward, the, the mantra was DHCS must own all of the data and must plan for access or migration of legacy data. In terms of code, um, code was siloed. So we moved to set up a, a shared code repository for all code in the organization to be placed and not managed by individual products or event projects or vendors. Um, include both infrastructure and application code when scoping out engineering acti uh, activities or objectives. So then we focused on the delivery of services um, as an approach to technology integration. Data is only as good as the business logic that it creates and manages. So decoupling or losing that logic um, makes the data less valuable. Think of APIs and composable services. Business processes are all be, also be implemented in the services layer. And this all gets delivered back to the business in something that they can use. In the center of this, we have a process, an agile process and Scrum methodology was established by this, this particular division. And so that was good. Um, however, it has to be highly tailored. You can't just take it out of the box and use it. So I'm gonna go into a, a workflow um, that I used over the past decade or so, depending on the project. And the intent of this workflow is to complete the tasks in each functional area columns within a two week time box. So it naturally fits to a, a sprint based uh, process. 
uh, each functional column has one or more decision gates that allow for features to flow forward or backward in the in the flow. So zoom in on this diagram, and we'll see that the functional areas are feature definition, architecture design, implementation, integration, verification, and validation, and release. And the various tasks in there are centered around um, passing the review gates or the decision gates, and or feeding back into that particular functional area things that need to be refined or just outright excluding them from the the future development activities so in terms of of this general diagram we also want to look at uh, cross-functional teams so in order to deliver a feature from story to feature complete we need a team to be uh wholly uh um wholly uh fully available of, of providing that solution. Um, so we have a product owner, scrum master, UI UX designer, technical architect, engineering lead, software engineers, DevOps engineers, and security architect. Some of these aren't full-time roles. You can multiplex several of these roles across multiple teams. Um, however, their their integration or their, their ability to be part of this workflow is key to ensuring that when we get to feature complete or the definition of done for a story or a complete set of stories as a feature um, it is what the the business expects or the product owner expects so moving away from that and talking more about the dhcs model we'll zoom in on this modification i made to the diagram to support the idea of splitting tasks across multiple entities the entities being state staff vendor staff and um, multiple vendors if you will and having um, a blended model where state and vendor staff collaborate to achieve certain aspects of of the um, work products expected from the, the tasks. So main goal here is the DHCS provides oversight and they are the, the keepers of the decision gates in each functional area. And in terms of the work products, we want DH, DHCS and vendor staff to collaborate on UX design, architecture, quality monitoring, et cetera, et cetera. And so there's a shared responsibility model here. Vendor staff, and or in this particular case for MesMD, is comprised of multiple vendors and are given the autonomy to perform tasks in the workflow with the understanding that the decision gates are not to be circumvented. So this is you know uh, a hybrid of, of an agile model and, and it's also a hybrid of a scrum uh, methodology in that um, you don't have a team that's whose responsibilities um, uh, or their reports are direct to a specific set of management teams that actually have dual reporting responsibilities, one to the project to fulfill the work that's required by the business, and the other is to their their leadership or the, the particular vendor's leadership. So the, the intent of, of this um, is to ensure that DHCS has insight into how and what is being built with the approval power at the decision gates. Provide a clear separation of which party is responsible for performing and delivering an outcome on a specific task. Account for blended teams, which both, both DHCS staff and vendors are working towards the outcome of building product features that have business value. Simplify the rules of engagement for work order authorizations and uh, or statement of work, another term for that, so that it's, it's clear that the, the the inputs are the stories and the outputs are the completed features. And we also take into account the fact that some things may not be completely finished at the end of a, a, a two week uh, time box. So we also wanna reduce amb ambiguity for the definition of done. The definition of done is looked at in each one of the, the, the feature functional area columns and um, adjusted as needed or um, outright rewritten if that's uh, the reasonable outcome. So by the time a story arrives to feature complete, we will have known the acceptance criteria has been um, defined, reviewed, and adjusted as needed, and the feature is done when it hits that green box uh, stop condition. So having said that, the, the customization of the workflow um, is, is critical to um, delivering and operating in this blended model um, with the shared responsibility between state and vendor staff and between multiple vendors. So in order to facilitate this, um, 
we all we want to put technology and tooling in, into place that allows us to push code from um, the engineer's desktop into the deployment environment, the designated environment, whether it be production or non-production, in a repeatable and automated fashion. So the first part of my engagement was is defining this particular pipeline and support support tools to facilitate this. And the goal here is to automate um, the transitions in the workflow that require some sort of quality check or inspection um, to the point where the, the system is performing the quality checks and doing and providing reports and the reviewers are provided with those reports and they're, they're um, in full transparency, publicly available to anybody on the team. So, so now um, that we've got the workflow and um, technology stack, let's dive a little bit into what, how this works in terms of um, the overall flow of the tooling and the workflow. So from left to right, we have code flow. And so say a developer writes a JavaScript um, block of JavaScript code, which is part of a feature. They would commit that to GitHub, which would then trigger a series of automated checks using tools that we've selected, um, such as white source, code climate check marks, not putting in plugs for these guys, but those tools where we, we selected um, because they fit our need. That isn't also forwarded to a, a integrate, a, continuous integration environment, and then packaged, upon success, packaged and deployed into our deployment environments using standard off-the-shelf or open source tools. We also um, look at this diagram from, from top or bottom to top. And so we use, for communication, we use Slack for Jira, for, we use track for tracking and project management. And um, linkage and traceability into what happens between when code is committed and pushed to the operating environment. Use Confluence to do uh, create long-lived artifacts and meeting notes and design artifacts, and we standardize on Draw.io for visual representations of the system as it integrates well with both Jira and Confluence. And so this entire stack um, is operational and it supports our workflow um, in the sense that when code is committed, the process for by, which is available for review and then available for approval um, is fully automated. And further, we deploy to non-production environments as code is committed. And, re, and um, once it passes a review gate, then that code can be pushed to higher level environments um, based on the outcome of the last two columns in that diagram. So in the future, we hope to deliver one ver we're planning on delivering version 1.0 of federal drawing reporting. We want to build more features. We want to continue to mature the engineering and operation pipelines, and we want to spin up the next project. So thank you.